Hello and welcome. My name is Leo Green. For years I've studied the tips and tricks of Pro Engineer, the techniques that they don't teach you in school, uh, the stuff that makes it look easy. That means by the time you finish watching this video, you'll have some cool new tools to use, perhaps even a new approach to an old problem, and we'll even have some fun along the way. What we're going to focus on today is the concept of using surface or surface features in their common modeling practice. So what's the difference between a surface feature and a solid feature? Well, a solid feature always finds its intersection with the part body, whereas a surface feature does not find the intersection on completion and will only find intersection with other surface features or quilts at the operator's discretion. So it gives the operator a lot more control as to what to intersect with, when to intersect, and uh, what to do with that outcome. And hopefully, as we go through, that'll become a little more clear to you. Let's make, uh, make a body to get started with. Uh, I got a, a part in mind, but uh, we'll see how it turns out as we go, f as we go forward. Let's take a look at uh, what we might make this part look like. Right click, make a line, draw out a, a little L shape. And I'm going to use a, a conic. You fly out the arc tool to get a conic, and that gives kind of a, a compound or complex kind of a shape. You'll notice I'm sketching here in the 3D view. If you want to go to the square view, just click that icon up there. I'm going to box all these dimensions, click on the modify icon. That gives me one box to modify them all. So I can make this one 90, make this one 90. Let's make uh, the, that's the, the row value of the ellipse. Uh, you might remember that from 10th grade geometry. And the square root of 2 minus 1 makes it an exact uh, ellipse. OK, uh, let's make this, say, 3 inches and this next one 5. That'll be fine. That'll give me a good size to get started with. I'm going to make this a symmetric extrusion, maybe 6 inches in total. Middle mouse button, Control-D, and now I've, I've got my part. Now, just to add a little spice to it, I'm going to select that face, Control-Key down, pick the opposite face, and ask for draft with respect to the bottom plane. Let's see if I can grab that plane there. Right-click. See, I want to grab that edge, but I want the plane. So I'll right-click until I see the tooltip for a plane, and then left-click. Grab the little handle here. Let's give this some radical draft. So we got the thing sloped significantly. I'll pick that edge, control key, pick the other edge, right click for some rounds, and just drag out a round, maybe something like that. So that kind of gives me a, a contoured shape. But let's say this is some sort of housing. Now inside this housing, I'm going to have a rotating shaft. This rotating shaft has got to be mounted in a bearing. Now I've already selected a bearing. And so I know the bore of the bearing. But if this is to be perhaps a molded plastic part or maybe a cast part or something like that, I want to add material around it before I bore the hole for the bearing. So let's add what will be the bearing seat. Watch this. Let's go to wireframes. You can see it a little better. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to add a revolve feature that's a surface. I'll sketch it on the center plane. Middle mouse button. Let's go to the sketch view. That'll be fine. Right click for center line. Drop in a center line that's horizontal. And then I'll ask for a rectangle. And that might be where my bearing is going to sit. So I'm going to ask for a diametral dimension. Give it its depth as well as where it is. And let's see, that's probably fine. Let's uh, box these, go to Modify, and let's change some of these numbers. So my bearing is going to be a 2 and a quarter bearing. And let's uh, be a 3 quarter shoulder. And let's make that uh, let's say one and a half up. And uh, let's make it a half inch forward from that interface. OK, so this might be my bearing face, or my bearing seat and middle mouse to complete the feature. And there it is, a closed 
quilt inside my part body. Well, why do I want to put the bearing first? Well, I'm going to locate other aspects of my part with respect to this bearing. I'm going to add material around this bearing, and then I'm going to ultimately use this bearing as a this bearing surface as a cut. Now, watch how this works out. So, as part of my design, I'm going to be using that center line. So, let's uh, let's grab that center line. We'll just turn it on for now, and let's uh, let's take a look at some of the common problems that you might run into. So, yeah, we'll come back to this bearing in a bit. So, let's add a uh, perhaps a protrusion that's extruded from that face, middle mouse button. I'll use that axis as a center line for a circle. And uh, say, I know that I'm going to have a protrusion that's two inches diameter that e exits my part somewhere over here. So you see, we now have a uh, little bit of a, 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 a hump there. And um, due to the function of this part, we're also going to want to provide for a cut that starts at that face is the same diameter and continues out as a cut okay so that's uh, that's a pretty common uh, boss perhaps or a fairing um, a lot of a lot of geometry kind of looks this way and for those of uh, run across this before, recognize that uh, if you want to put rounds on this, you want to put draft on this, that's going to give you some trouble. Take a look. If I ask for a round on this edge, let's say, uh, say an eighth inch round, that's no problem. Right click, go back to edit definition, let's add another edge to it. Middle mouse, hey, that's, that works fine, but look at what's happening in these corners getting tough. Let's edit definition. What if I want to add control key, another round, another edge to these? Call that done. What's it going to say? What is that? Wah, wah. You end up with the troubleshooter because it can't figure out how to handle this kind of a round situation. So this is where we're going to go back to taking a look at how surfaces might be able to help us with this. So I'm going to remove this round, just just delete it, because coming at it that way is not going to work. So let's take a look at what some of the other options might be. Go back to the wireframe view, and I'm going to convert, go back to edit definition for this extrude, and change it to a surface. It's not a cut anymore, it's just a surface, and on the options pane, I now have something called capped ends. So I'll click that, and now I have a quilt instead of a cut. Okay? And I'll do the same thing. Well, yeah, I'll do the same thing. Edit definition. Changing this one also to a quilt with capped ends. A quilt, by the way, is the name used in pro-engineer terms for a surface set, some sort of uh, combination of multiple surface patches. Okay, so what is the advantage of making a surface feature instead of a solid feature? Well, I mentioned earlier that a surface feature doesn't find the intersections by default. It allows you to specify when those interfaces or inter intersections are uh, uh, computed. So that means I can add things like rounds or drafts to the quilts prior to the intersection. Let's take a look at how that might pan out. Well, if I put a round, perhaps on this edge, let's go with that same size, perhaps. You see how it rounds very cleanly, very easily, the edge of that quilt. Let's round also this one. Bring that one to a smaller value. And then I can use these quilts to do the protrusion or cut on my schedule. So let's pick this quilt feature, pick it again. That gets the surface geometry. Edit 
and then solidify where I can add material or using the cut icon remove so that becomes a cut that already has the round in it all right let's do that again with this other quilt watch what happens we'll ask for edit solidify and this time we do want a protrusion we're going to add material and that gives us a condition that we might not have been able to get to with just rounds because you see how this overlaps here but if we still have that funny looking point that I don't want. I want to do something a little better than that. I want to have it to blend a little nicer than that. So watch this. Because they're separate individual quilts, I can go back, edit definition, and instead of making it blind one way, I can make it blind both ways, where this other way is just going to extend just a touch. And watch what it does. See how the intersections change radically? That gives us more options. Okay, how's that going to work for us? Well, watch this. Because I control when the intersections happen, I can add a round to this configuration or this condition here. And then bring back that solidify. And now look at the condition. And what's the advantage of that? Well, if I ask for a round now, you see how it blends so nice? And it's a very happy round. Very nice blended intersection. Couldn't do that otherwise. What if this face needs to be drafted on top of all this? Well, what about we go back before that round and ask for some draft? So I'll say, give me some draft on what face? On that face. And let's see, uh, let's make the pivot plane through that axis. Now, I don't have a plane there now, so let's make a plane that is perhaps with respect to that one, and we want that bearing axis. Not at, not at a, uh, not at offset, but parallel. That gives us a nice parallel draft hinge. Draft hinge is here. And then I can draft that face. Let's push it back maybe five degrees. Then when I put back the features, I get uh, a very nice drafted face. All the rounds are still nicely playing. And, uh, and so on. Not too bad. All right, let's look at something else. What if this part perhaps had a, had a flange all around it? So let's add a flange. Make a, a protrusion that's sketched perhaps on this plane that is an offset. I'll do offset chain, or I'll pick this edge, and then this one here. And then you'll see it asks me next or accept. I'll accept that one, and I'll choose, uh, type in an inch. It gives me an offset chain of edges. Let's ask for a line to connect these two here, and uh, call that done. Say this flange is supposed to be maybe 0.2. So we have a nice flange. It goes all the way around. Now, the reason I add that flange in there is because what if this part needs to be generally shelled to point 0.1? Now, I know I could have just shelled it and then added this flange. That would have been a little tricky, though, with the slope, though, wouldn't it? But this gives another opportunity to take a look at what surfaces might be able to do for you. Let's say that you'd need to create some sort of shell, but the shell function's not working for you. Well, this is where you might use a surface set and offset. Now watch how this can work for you. If I pick geometry and then select or select, get a feature, if I select again, then I get geometry. Using control C, control V, I'm now pasting a surface copy. Okay? That's how that works. But before I call this done, I'm going to add new 
instructions. Right now, my surface uh, selected is just the one. If I hold the shift key down, I can pick more planes. When I release the shift key, the selection criteria has now changed from single surfaces to seed, surf, and boundary. Notice how it's selected all of those surfaces without me having to go through and pick them all. Pretty nice. Middle mouse to call that surface set done. And then, while it's selected, edit offset. And I'll flip the arrow because I want to offset inward a total value of, say, 0.1, which is going to be my shell thickness. So now I've got a surface copy. Now the reason I copied surfaces first before doing the offset is because I can offset a single surf or I can offset a quilt. So I have to first make a copy to prepare the quilt that I'm going to offset. Go back to the wireframe display and you'll be able to see those two surfaces in my geometry. Now if I want to use that offset surface as a cut, I can see it's not quite long enough. So it doesn't extend beyond or outside the part. So watch this. I'll pick that quilt, right click to get it. Then I'll pick an edge and I'll go edit, extend. And you can see it's extending that surface. But I want to extend all the edges. So holding the shift key down, I'll come near, and instead of single edges, it changes to boundary. Select, and now I have the entire boundary uh, chain. So let's see. 3 8 extension goes beyond my my part. That'll be plenty. Probably don't need that much, but let's uh, yeah, let's bring it back to maybe a quarter. That'll be fine. Middle mouse, and now that offset surface quilt extends beyond my part geometry. And if I use it for a cut, edit, solidify, flip the arrow and specify cut, I now have a cut that is behaving a lot like a sp specific shell. So instead of shelling the entire part, I'm s uh, specifically or, s or selectively shelling a specific area. Pretty neat. Now let's take a look at how that could really pan out for us. What if I insert before that surface copy maybe a, a new feature? So if I ask for a new feature that's extruded perhaps from that plane, middle mouse, let's, uh, let's put a circle perhaps over here or something. Extends up. Let's see. Let's stand it up a little bit more, maybe up to there. And uh, we might want to, yeah, let's put some draft on it with respect to its top face. Some draft. That's good. Put a maybe a round on the outside of it. Let's use a little round, and then a big round on its base quite that big. Yeah, that's fine. So, okay, so we've added a lot of new geometry, and you can tell there's a lot of new surfaces there. Let's, uh, let's also move that over a little bit. Double click. Let's take that maybe to uh, 138. Update. Okay, that's fine. I just wanted to move it over a little bit. What happens now when I put the rest of this back? The copy, the offset, the extend, selective shell. Pretty neat. All right, well, let's take a look at what might happen next. We have a general thickness of 0.1. We have a flange of 0.2. We might want to put a round on there. So let's put a round. Let's maybe make this one, say, 0.5. Well, if we make that one 0.5, holding control key down, I make this one 0.5. If I simply select this one, it creates a new set, and I might want to make this one 0.6. And that'll give us a very nice transition from the 0.1 to the 0.2 flange.
Okay. So good so far. Let's take a look at now. Let's go back to that bearing again. What else might we want to use that for? Well, that bearing is now floating in space. We certainly need to put some material around it. So let's do that. If I pick that feature and then select it again, I select the entire quilt. If I go to edit, I can offset that entire quilt, the thickness or the nominal thickness that I'd like to add material around the bearing, maybe 0.2. And that means that I have material all around it to the 0.2 level. Okay? Right now, though, let's see, did I, I made that as a surface, right? Yeah. Because it's a surface offset, this new resultant geometry is also quilt. But then what happens? Here, check this out. Does this ever happen to you? They come over to you, uh, you'll find out later on that that bearing size upscaled some. You thought it was going to be one size, but now they change their mind. It's going to be something else. So it's, instead of two and a quarter, it's perhaps uh, maybe 275 now. No problem. Just changing an update, right? But now you'll notice that the thickness required around the bearing extends outside of our geometry. So we have two problems here. One is that if this is going to be a molded or cast part, we have to fill this compound area here with a draftable something or other, and then we have to draft the opposite way on the other side of this compound shape. How might we do that? Okay, let's take a look at some of the options. On the underside of our part, we want to add draft to the bottom. So what I'm going to ask for here is an extruded surface that's sketched on the offset face. I just sketch it there. Then I'll just go to the sketch. And that, that's fine. And so what is this going to look like? Well, it's going to have that size and it's going to be drafted. Something like that. Let's go to a three-point arc. Something like that. And then right-click, center line, because I want it to be symmetrical. So I'll ask now for the mirror around the center line, and I've basically got my sketch going on. So I'll ask for a dimension. This is going to give us our draft dimension. The radius is already defined, right? And then one more thing. Let's ask for a tangency between this line and the reference. So that fully defines our new sketch, fully locked into the bearing and the bearing size. Maybe uh, 15 degrees. Call that done. And I'm going to go up to selected. And I'll pick the far side of the offset. Adding one more thing, this is the capped ends. And so now if I shade it and look at it, that's what it needs to look like essentially on the inside. But obviously we have these big old fat corners sticking out on the outside. So that's not going to do for us. So what's our option? Well, this is where we get to selectively decide what to intersect and when. Go back to wireframe. And remember, we have the outside already copied. So I'm going to pick that feature, pick it again to pick its entire quilt. And then with the control key down, I'll pick the newly created quilt and ask for an intersect. Middle mouse. And now I'm able to add material that's only on the inside. But if I do that, I won't have enough on the outside. So now, with that one currently selected, control key down, I'll pick the offset quilt and ask for an intersect there where I want to keep... Oh, where's the one I want to keep? I'm going to remove these. <laughs> pick that quilt. Pick that quilt. And I'm going to get my flip arrows correctly configured. 
So that's going to be the shape of the geometry that I want to add. So now, if I pick that quilt and ask for solidify, edit, solidify, I'm now adding geometry on both the outside and the inside in such a way that I couldn't do it with all just regular extrusions or so on. Well, let's take it to the next step where we're going to add some draft and, and some rounds and such. So, we'll add some draft. I want to put some draft on this face. I want to put some draft on this face as well. And the draft will be with respect to that plane there. Maybe three degrees. But I don't want to draft this top face. One of the draft options is to exclude specific loops. So we'll not draft that loop, and we'll not draft that one. So now we have draft only going on on the inside faces. Now, if I pick this face here, just that one face, go to draft, pick that plane, and now can push that face back just a touch and get it drafted the other direction. And what about this face? This face needs to be extended all the way out to this face. Watch this. If I pick this face, just that face, I can ask for edit and offset. Now that's going to give me an offset of just that one surface. See it there. But I don't want that. And there's a lot of options in the offset menus. One of them is called replace. And you'll see here, replace a surface feature. So watch this. If I select here and then pick this plane, watch what this does. It drags that surface all the way out to the selected plane, giving me a very nice um, addition to my part. Add a few more rounds. Let's see. We want to kind of roll that over a little bit. Maybe put a round around there. That's pretty nice. OK, that's fine. And of course, we could put rounds on the inside as well. But what is the last thing that we want to do? The next thing that we want to do, go back to the wireframe. What about our bearing? Our bearing's still in there. Our bearing seat, if you will. Now, this seat driving the rest of our design, and now we're going to put it to good use. I'm going to select the quilt, get into there, pick the quilt, and then pick the back face of it. Going back to our friend Offset, and use the next option up, which is called Expand, I can take one face of it and drag it to any level that I want. So now I'm expanding or ex uh, growing that face out so that when I pick that quilt and use it to, for a solidify cut, it cuts through the entire part. And then one more thing we want to do, and that is to put a hole that is utilizing this axis as primary reference. Right click, secondary reference is going to be that face there. And let's make it just through all. And that might be clearance for the shaft or something like that that goes through there. OK, well, super. We covered a lot of ground here with this uh, tutorial. Uh, using surfaces in part modeling. Now, by all means, go through this a couple of times. Um, you might want to review some things, go through it slowly. You know, you don't have to rush through it like I have here. I, uh, I go through it quickly simply to save on the, on the bandwidth, keeping the, the file size small. All right? So uh, I hope a little of this made sense to you. And I, I hope that you'll be able to put this to good use as you go forward with your uh, your geometry creation. 
Okay, and uh, thanks for paying attention, and uh, hope to see you again soon. So long now.